Hey there, Shooby Doodlers. How are you doing? Well, my animal ABC has reached the letter C for coo. Helen coo. What's that all about? <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Let's do it. You're going to need a pen and a pencil and an eraser and a paintbrush and some paints. But let's do it. So I'm going to start over on this side. Normally I kind of have the head over this side and the body that side. But I'm making all of these things into mugs and uh, all this ABC thing. And so they need to kind of point this way. So that's what I'm doing. And this is kind of the head. And then we're going to want to have the nose kind of part about there. And then these enormous horns are going to be coming out kind of that way. And then we're going to want to have sort of shoulder and kind of straight across. And then maybe a little bit of sort of hip on the body. The body's going to be kind of about like that. And this is all going to be about there, coming down to there. And then we're going to want to have the uh, legs coming down there and I'm just gonna I'm not gonna draw all those feet I'm gonna have them hidden in grass <laughs> like that and we're gonna want one more leg there and probably another one there when I was thinking about what to uh, what to draw I uh, <laughs> when it comes to let us see I was thinking of a cow and then Karina who always comes up with great ideas for things for me to draw uh, she lives in Scotland and she said, what about a Helan Koo? And uh, what is a Helan Koo? <laughs> this is a Helan Koo. And I thought, yeah, that would be fun. And and I've kind of drawn Helan Koo's. I've drawn Helan Koo's in a book that I wrote called Craig Manure. And Craig is a, <laughs> a craggy old guy who lives on an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and, and in the story oh I wrote this quite some time ago uh, he um, these guys appear out of the sky one day and they've come to build an internet booster station on his island <laughs> and so in the end he gets the fastest internet connection in the world on his little island and he teaches himself how to make in those days an HTML website and um, and it all came about because I was uh, no hang on I think about where I'm going to put the eye so we're just going to have kind of an eye in there and that's all you're going to see sticking through something like that and um, and they're very they're very furry <laughs> and and so what happened was I was uh, um, on the Scottish book bus at the time uh, which was a wonderful um, <laughs> thing that used to go around Scotland and it was like a great big bus which had been turned into a, like a mobile library and it would go all around the highlands and the islands and, and inner cities too and and it would uh, go to little schools in the middle of nowhere and, and bring them books and an author or an illustrator and I went on the book bus several times I went to Orkney two years running for about five days which was just fantastic that was beautiful and um, and I went right across the northern coast of Scotland on the book bus and down the Great Glen and uh, and then we went to Mull <coughs> the Isle of Mull <laughs> and 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 so we had to get the the ferry across and, and then the the port where you come into on the ferry is called Craig Newer, all one word and I, you kind of can be a little bit dyslexic at times and I read it as Craig Manure and, and so uh, so somehow this sort of idea of Craig Manure became a character and over the two or three days that I was on Mull visiting schools uh, in Tobermory you may have seen the uh, the TV children's TV show Tobermory it really is like that <laughs> so I went to Tobermory in a primary school there and um, 
and uh, went to all sorts of schools. And, and we had the Iona school. We went, we um, we stayed on Iona, but but the ferry couldn't take the bus, so all the kids had to come over from the island on the ferry to like a school visit over to the the um, the, the book bus, which was sort of waiting on the shore for them and that was a fantastic day um there's only about five kids on the, in the school in the whole island i think something like that and so anyway so you know, all the time we were sort of driving around the island i kept sort of cracking jokes about craig manure and and slowly inventing this sort of character who was a bit of a sad old <laughs> kid who lived on this island in the middle of the Atlantic and um, and when I got home uh, and, and, and I sort of thought mm, he's, he's just going to be all he's interested in is bird poo and, and cow poo and, and uh, coo poo we should say and so uh, I sort of came up with this proposal for, for a book about him and I took it to various publishers who were appalled that's a book about poo no you can't do that I said but you know 10 year old boys that's all they're interested in and find it very funny uh, so it it didn't happen and then one day I got um, an email from a Scottish publisher called Barrington Stoke and they uh, published books especially for dyslexic kids and people with kind of reading problems and they said if you've got any ideas for, for books for sort of dyslexic boys and they particularly said boys I said well I got this character Craig Mignot lovely they said so so I wrote the book and and what was fascinating was they had um they, they would sort of send the manuscript off to uh, be tested by lots of different kids and they would sort of make notes or you know somebody would make notes for them and then you'd have this great big long sort of telephone call with the editor who would sort of go through it and say, how can we change this? How can we change that? And it was usually strange words, words with sort of too many, you know, consonants together or something like that. And two strange words that went together one after the other, which made it look weird and made it look like another word instead. And, and what I found really interesting there was that right at the beginning, they would um, have lots and lots of comments. And then towards the, right, the end, there'd be hardly any because they had got the author's voice. And, uh, <laughs> and so they could sort of hear it. And, and, and hearing the author's voice in their head helped them to decode uh, the, the, the writing. And if there were any sort of problems and bits that uh, made it hard for them to, to decode. And so Craig Manure, um, and, and I'd built this website as well, <laughs> as if it was Craig Manure, um, out of Flash. So it was all highly animated. It doesn't w work online anymore, unfortunately. And uh, and I had games on there, and I used to have lots of um, <laughs> students would play these games. So there was Tossing the Koo Poo, and, oh, I can't remember. There was, yeah, I think it was, trying to avoid the bird pooing on you, that kind of thing, lots of games and stuff like that. It was all good, clean fun. When you're absolutely sure that the ink is dry, then erase those pencil lines. So I'm gonna paint with a Pentel Aquash uh, paintbrush and the, the water is in the handle, it flows through the brush in sort of a different way to a normal brush, but I've just got so used to working with these brushes now. And they're really good for sketching, I'm not, uh, I'm not being sponsored by them, but if you want to check them out, you'll find the link in the um, comments box below. So this is, you know, basically a an orange cow, a ginger cow. So I'm going to sort of do this nice sort of basic ginger all over, really. Maybe a bit more yellow in there. That's maybe it's a bit too red. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, and the story is that um, you know he gets this, he becomes famous really because he's got this builds this website, and I I actually built this website all out of Flash that so had animation and everything, and I built this very um, basic kind of um, 
questionnaire thing so people could send in, you know, dear Craig, I have a problem with my compost bin or how do, how do I stop my toilet exploding and that kind of thing. And so I had this sort of agony aunt thing going where I would solve people's toilet problems <laughs> online. <laughs> um, and he's a little obsessed with poo, basically. So um, he he collects um, bird poo off the rocks and he puts it into bags for fertiliser. And then his cousin, oh, Dougal, I can't remember what his cousin's name was. Um, his cousin would come over every now and then and, uh, <laughs> and uh, collect up all these bags, which would then be processed into big jobby fertiliser, uh, which um, was guaranteed to make your plants bigger and stronger and your strawberries taste gorgeous and that kind of thing. And uh, and so he kind of lived uh, on this island with his coos and the birds. There was always one bird that was coming after him. There was a pair of them actually. They nested above his door. They were called the B-52s because they were always trying to bomb him. And um, there was a song actually. I, I can't find it. It went, there's a birdie in the sky and he's got his beady eye on me. Hey, yes, me. He's got nothing else to do but drop his number twos on me. Oh, me. Why, oh, why does the birdie in the sky always wait until I come walking by? There's a birdie in the sky and he's got his beady eye on me. Yes, me. <laughs> Oh no! And um, so he would just always be being pooed upon. And as I say, he's just obsessed with poo. And, <laughs> and, one, and you know, with nothing else to do on the island, then he'd have this tossing the coo poo thing. So he'd just sort of pick up coo poos and sort of toss them as if they were uh, frisbees. <laughs> Um, that's probably quite enough now about um, Craig Manure. So I've sort of put this sort of mm, reddish coat over there. It's kind of a strange colour coming out here at the moment. I don't, I'm looking at my little monitor. It's a different, it's a bit browner. But anyway, so and then I'm going to really do a lot with burnt sienna, I think, because that's kind of the colour that they are. But while that's drying, I think I'll do the, the horns, so I'll have a bit of um, this is uh, Naples yellow, so I'm just going to put that in as sort of a base coat. And a lot of the colours that I mix it are just picking up bits that are already on here and you know, so that it's something I've already mixed for previously, so it's, it's it's not one particular color I'm mixing in with another because it's already been mixed with something, and and you can see that it's a kind of a purpley kind of color I'm mixing in here, uh, which is moving over to here where I've got a bit of neutral tint, which I'm just going to put in there for some shade. I think we might want some shading under there too just to make that the head stand forward a little bit and then it's going to be about you know, doing these oh that's quite strong that was about doing these little um uh, bits for the fur and trying to make the fur look furry which is not the easiest thing to do I don't think so um, we're going to want it to be slightly lighter on the top uh, and it's just kind of making it's using it's using the, the 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 brush to create those strokes so as you touch it, it it'll be a very fine line like that and then press a bit harder it'll get thicker and then thinner again so you, you could take your time <laughs> I tend to kind of rush away and get on with it I know somebody saying you know oh, you know can I 
slow the video down and <laughs> not not speed it up. <laughs> Actually, this is the speed that I paint. I'm not speeding this up at all. So it's not like a a video commentary over the top. This, I'm actually <laughs> painting while I'm talking. I'll leave that there for a bit. And then I'm going to get some green. And I'm going to do some of this on the bottom. So I'm thinking about this being a mug as well. So I want this extra bit down the side. And, and I might have to do a bit of mucking about in Photoshop to extend it. Because um, I'm thinking about the the way it wraps around the mug, so it's it's not just a um, it's not just an illustration. It, it's it's an illustration for a purpose, um, which I think is a good thing to to have something in mind about why why you're what you're doing something for. Um, and I've been thinking quite a lot about art. You know what is art, and what's the what's the point of it all? <laughs> uh, and I think a lot of it is. I think there's two things. There's, there's there's the person who's looking at it and the person who's doing it. So I think the person who's doing it is slightly driven to do it and wants to wants to create something. And um, and I think the person who's viewing it just sort of wants something nice to look at really uh is that is that the basis of art is that what it's about let me get some more so this is the burnt sienna which is slightly dried up in my palette so i'm hoping it's there we are um so i'm gonna make this a bit darker down the side there so yeah and and i th i think i've always really been a commercial artist and I always felt things have to have a reason and you know and I can appreciate art artists and you know what they're trying to do what they're trying to say but you know whenever I sort of felt I wanted to say something and make a point with art I never kind of felt it comfortable doing it so so I'm sort of very much, I think, a commercial artist and do, I, I, I sort of create artwork to, to please, I suppose, and, and, and to go on things or to go in things like books. And so, and, and also I'm a kind of a narrative artist. I do like telling stories. There's, there's not a, a definite story in in this picture but it it sort of tells a story in that there's a there's a cow in a field <laughs> and and he's looking at you and you're maybe layering a story on top of it and you know your own story and thinking, what's he what's he looking at what's he doing and why or just Oh, I love Helen Coos, and I've always wanted a mug with a Helen Coo or a T-shirt. I'm doing T-shirts as well. And uh, so, so, yeah, like I said, it's a million reasons why you as a viewer might want to view. And, and of course, some of you are viewing to see, how did he paint that? How, what's his technique there? How did he draw that? And so some of you are learning from it and some of you are thinking well, I know some people some people listen to me to improve their English <laughs> uh, and some people they say they say oh I don't do your paintings I don't I don't follow you for drawing or anything like that it's just uh, it's my particular English accent that they like and that they want to sort of copy <laughs> to improve their English. So yeah, there's many reasons to watch a video, aren't there? Right, I think I need a little bit more in the horns here. So, so I'm just gonna put some, uh, maybe a bit of texture in there with the brush slightly. These, these brushes, they do wear out and they wear in as well. So you get a, um, there's a kind of well I think most brushes are the same there's a kind of a peak perfection moment where you think oh this brush is lovely and 
and you can do all sorts of things with it and then and then they start to lose it whatever it was that they had i'm going for a bit of sepia now which is a darker brown i'm gonna put some in there maybe and it's just this brushing in these I think we need a bit like that in there and well, that works so it's sort of creating these the, the the shadows in in the fur really so you know you've got the curly bits on the top and they'll be catching the light but then in between them there are going to be quite dark shadows uh, and then they're going to be little kind of holes as it were kind of it's hard to explain so and then we can use these also to uh, build up shadow so there'll be reflected light underneath on the stomach coming up but um but then we want a little bit of sort of tone and sort of molding around here but then these can just sort of get smaller and smaller and fade away we want some shade around there too quite a lot in there we can put in there down there like that and in there i feel it's this brush is uh just seizing up they do that sometimes if I squeeze it's not doing anything so it has it's just decided to, to uh, seize up and then you have to kind of wash them all out in bleach I think I did a, a video about that I'll, I'll see if I can I did and I'll put a link up there if I did to show you how to clean them out it is a bit of a performance and uh, I don't think they tell you about that on the back end <laughs> but um, but if you want to keep them flowing nice and free that's, you do need to clean them once in a while it's basically you're getting kind of mm, little bugs and things growing oh I'm trying to get this to flow when you want to clean your brush then you need to kind of squeeze it slightly but this isn't wanting to squeeze I don't know what what's going on um, so you need to squeeze it let a bit of water flow through it's just stopped working it which is not a good advertisement so I'm just gonna go back to the old school and so I'm getting a bit of Naples yellow and we want that to have a bit of shine so um, I think maybe a bit of red across the top. Maybe that's a bit too red. I don't know. And around the bottom there, like that. And we want that to be on the bottom lip. This is a very fine brush. This is Rosemary Designer Number Two. Uh, hmm. Bring that in around there. And we're going to want to have a little bit of shade in there and some, some in there as well. Um, some there like that, I think. It's looking okay. And because it's sort of cartoony, <laughs> slightly cartoony by this smile with a bit of shade there and then I think we're going to need some um, and then we're going to need something of the flowers uh, I'm thinking actually I should have little Scottish harebells in there shouldn't I somewhere uh, I think they're just kind of that's too bright too bright so I'm going to have to do a little bit of ink onto there later something red that's too red uh, yeah. 
is see I need to have my normal <laughs> tools that I work with to get this right so I'm just going to do something like that um, and then we'll get up like that finally I'm just going to get something a little bit darker and just We just need a little bit more darkness in underneath here, like that. Maybe a bit more in other places. So I'll just put, put a bit more in there, a bit more underneath there. So these are. Just going to get that little bit there like that. I think we might need a couple more bits of sort of shade in on this side and around that side maybe. Mm -hmm. This is the point where it's so easy to just ruin it and <laughs> get it all completely wrong. And I think we might need to do a little bit of shade underneath that lip. And then just the final little bit of uh, burnt sienna just to sort of bring that little beard to <laughs> a point and there we go <laughs> i'm not going to do any more thanks for watching make sure you are subscribed to the shoe rainer drawing channel and keep coming back for lots more drawings every week <laughs> in the meantime keep drawing 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 practice 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 and i'll see you next time you take care now bye bye